I'm Hannah Dorn with Ward Laboratories in Kearney, Nebraska, and today we are going to talk about three different methods um, for sampling pastures. Uh, so first of all, it's important to kind of get a lay of the land. So for this particular paddock, um, it kind of starts on a slope behind me. As you can see, this area gets flatter. Um, it's sometimes prone to some flooding. There's usually some water flowing in some of these waterways like the one behind me. And then um, off to the north, it will get a little bit steeper and a little bit higher ground. Uh, today, we're just going to be focusing on this flatter area and we're going to talk about three different methods. The first is the diagonal method where you just take a diagonal line and sample across. Uh, we'll also have the W method, which is pretty much how it sounds. And then the third is the hula hoop method. All right, so Hannah just told you about how we're gonna do three different kinds of um, pasture sampling. So the first two methods, the diagonal line method and the W method, is based on trying to take random samples throughout the field but actually having it represent what the animal is consuming. So the diagonal method, I'm just gonna walk a straight line from here about to where those fence posts are and I'm gonna take samples along the way of what I think the animals are gonna be eating and that's gonna be probably more of this green, green stuff um, but a little bit of this um, they're gonna get anyways when they're picking it up because Cattle are grazers, not browsers. If we were uh, sampling for sheep and goats, then we might be able to be even a bit more selective um, with our grabs, but we want this to represent the animal's diet. Same idea with the W method. The only difference is instead of picking one straight line and walking that diagonal, I'm gonna walk in a giant W across the whole field and hopefully that would uh, give me the opportunity to get an even more representation of the field. With the W method, you're gonna need to take 30 to 50 grabs, so it is a bit more work, but it's hopefully going to represent that field and that animal's diet better. And the last method is why I'm holding a hula hoop. We're gonna know the diameter of this hula hoop and with that, we're gonna be able to calculate the square area that this hula hoop covers. Um, later on, Hannah's gonna throw the hula hoop in the air. Wherever it lands, whatever it lands around, that's what she's gonna sample. So if it's landing across this, this stuff is can in considered part of the biomass. Um, so that method is something that's commonly used with cover crops and um, it doesn't do a very good job of representing what the animal's diet is, but it does show one quick snapshot of what is actually out on the pasture. Which sampling method works best for you is gonna depend on your goals and what you plan to get out of sampling. Okay, so the grass um, is a little bit short today to be actually out here taking samples, but the cattle are out here, so this is gonna be useful information to us. Um, but we wanted to make sure and get you this information so that you could go out and do your spring sampling of your pasture grass. We've got our samples here. So we've got our W pattern, our diagonal pattern, and our um, sample from everything inside the hula hoop. We've got everything marked with our uh, account number. Putting your name and address is going to be just as good and then we're going to run an NIR plus minerals so that we can know about the protein and the micronutrients as well as the energy value of the forage on this pasture. So I just want to talk a little bit first about um, how we sampled for the diagonal and the V pattern. We just used our hands and grabbed um, the grass so you can see we got a little bit of green and a little bit of the brown grass in there as well because some of that dormant grass is going to come up when they wrap their tongues around the forage um, to pull it into their mouths. Anyways, so we feel that these are probably going to represent the animal's diet more. This hula hoop one, as you can see, it's so difficult because the bag's already fogging up, has a lot more of this stemmy stuff because we just took all of the biomass from within the hula hoop, whether it was sticks and stemmy or if it was actually green grass that they wanted to eat. So this represents what's out there as far as the field goes, but it doesn't represent their diet as well. Um, another thing you'll notice, it's a 70 degree day here in Nebraska. 
we just took our samples and our bags are already starting to fog up. So it's really important to get these samples to the lab before they start to deteriorate in their bags because the moisture starts coming out.